Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So this is Roxy Journal of Stitchery down the garden path. So today's video is really cruise orientated. For those of you who are interested in my adventures, I thought I would do a little bit of stitching. I haven't done a lot more on my little squirrely friend here. So I thought I might as well do that while I tell you what I've been up to. But before I get started, I will show you a cupcake class that I did and my finished products. You will be suitably impressed, but I need to move everything because it's gonna get messy. And I figured I might as well show you this now. So on the boat is a restaurant that Jamie Oliver has, and that's where the class was held. They did make a comment that we're now, you know, in the Jamie Oliver family, but I do note on the certificate of completion, there's no reference to Jamie Oliver. So obviously he's not got his name on any of these activities. So yeah, I thought I was Jamie Oliver certified and um, yeah, I'm not. So what we did was we made out a very thick fondant, a frog, you see my frog? He lost an eye on the elevator coming from deck five to deck eight. Now I've got sticky fingers. So um, we made that and then there was a spare cupcake to make whatever we wanted. So I thought I'd have a go at a bunny. So that's what I made. So I've got myself a coffee. I'll probably take the top layer off of um, fondant and sugar and mess and um, focus just on the cupcake itself because boy, it's sweet. He was telling us they make it all on the ship and squeeze it out into big rolls because we got like these little chunks of um, fondant and then we had to roll it in our hand. I'm just having a look at my photos because I did take a photo, yeah, here it is, of the desk when we sat down. So it was a cupcake and some pieces of fondant that we then shaped according to their instructions. Then the second cupcake was up to us. So they had sprinkles, chocolate bits, um, some buttercream in um, a bag ready to go. So that was pretty much what greeted us when we walked in the door. So that was my adventure today. Um, I've just finished filming my Percy the Peacock video and we are on Friday on our way back to Brisbane. So I've got three full days at sea. Well now two and a half because it's now after, after midday on Friday and we land on Monday in the last video he announced that um, in the morning most of us will be pretty much off the boat by 10 a.m so they're pretty quick i think our slot to get off is at quarter past nine so off we go so what i thought i'd do is i'm just going to stitch catch you up to speed with the last two three days um so yeah if i can find an appropriate needle because I think I was using a really, f this one, but just one thread. That was taking forever, so I might just go to two threads. So we, I told you about the Pearl Place, the Pearl Farm in Picton and Wellington. Did I tell you about, um, where did we go? I need the schedule. The days have just merged into one. So I think, where's my schedule gone? My goodness, I did a photo of where we were heading before we left Brisbane. So Napier, yeah, very, very pretty, pretty place. And from Napier, seaside city, town, very large town, we went to the, um, what did we do? Oh gosh, I can't even think. I know we went to Thermal Springs. Yeah, that, no, that was the next day up near Rotorua. We spent the day driving up there and we went and saw the mud um, and thermal springs is like geysers. It, it was probably the best, close to the second best. Um, because when we got there, oh, the rain wasn't good. Out of all the days, perfect sunshine, that's the day that we uh, had some rain. I can clearly see on this squirrel tail that I've changed to two threads instead of one. So I'm going to put the effort in, go back to one thread, 
because I want it to be fine. I don't want it to be thick, my little squirrel. It'll overpower the print. So anyway, we hopped on the bus. We went out to these thermal springs up near Rotorua and had a look at the steam coming up. So at the end of this video, I've got some pictures to add into this video and some clips of the steam coming out of the ground, the thermal, thermal steam. And then we walked through their school they have on site. Oh, we saw a kiwi too. We saw three kiwis. They had a uh, three of them there, uh, two males and a female. So that was pretty cool. I've seen a taxidermy kiwi at the museum last time I was on a cruise to New Zealand, but never a live one. So that was that was a bit special. Quite a large bird. Oh, now I've hooked the lace. Seriously, I don't know how much I'm going to get done here while I'm chatting. Um, but the school is where I want to talk. They showed us three skills, three traditional skills and that is carving stone wood bone and they also showed us weaving so preparing the flax and making products i hope i have all my facts right i do apologize in advance to any new zealand folk that are watching and listening to this interpretation of what i probably only half heard because i the attention span of a gnat but um, I was really impressed well the carving was beautiful on both all three mediums but the weaving oh my goodness and on the wall around the room were photos from historical um, weaving examples so the villagers weaving making things preparing the materials it was just Oh, beautiful images and then on the walls and then into the museum that was attached was some of the work that the students um, had completed and once they've completed their two years they can do a third year and go on to be technically officially trained in the craft and then I guess that would become potentially their career so it was oh it was brilliant really really good best part of that particular tour um then we made our way back nothing too exciting we did stop at a kiwi farm kiwi fruit farm but it was pouring rain so they drove in showed us the trees and drove back out we didn't even get off the bus but we could certainly see you know what it was all about and i've never seen kiwis growing in in a plantation and like the tree itself the big canopy it creates and then the fruit hangs from there so that was interesting being a farm kid then we went to the town hall in the neighboring town where they had a big presentation about the kiwi industry within their community the benefits of their future plans so yeah all of the brands represented there i've seen on stickers on my fruit back in australia at my local grocery store so that was really cool because they're always these little fruit stickers you take off the fruit. And yeah, it was great to say, oh, I support you already. So that was lovely. And then they had jams and all sorts of products to one side while we enjoyed a cup of coffee, tea, and a scone with some cream and kiwi jam. So that was cool. Back on the bus, back to the boat. The next day we went to uh, Auckland. Now we've walked Auckland and been on a couple city tours previous. So this time we decided we would venture to the film set of The Hobbit. My husband's a big fan of the movies. I do like them too. I really enjoy watching movies that are created in different worlds because I start looking at the buttons and the, the jackets and how they tailored the clothing and that really it excites me even if it's an alien movie like I'm always looking at that side of the movie so off we went to Hobbiton and it is based on a actual working sheep farm and um, they have thousands of sheep in the rolling hills it was interesting that when the scouts for 
the movie were flying around that area looking for a place to build the movie set for where the hobbits would live. If you haven't watched the movies, I'm referring to The Hobbit. There's three in the series and Lord of the Rings, another three movies. All of those movies have um, sections filmed in that area of these little villages that they created. I'll put photos at the end of the video if you're interested. Um, so over the period of time, the, f the, the farm was selected. They approached the farmer and the family and said, hey, your area, the, in particular, this, this um, little dam or pond, it was quite large, with this particular tree caught their eye and then the shape of the land caught their eye. So they went in, did a deal, and the next day that the contract was signed, a heap of New Zealand uh, army personnel arrived and they cut a kilometre or so of bitumen road into the point of which they would film and create this set. They then, um, some of the, it was interesting, some of the New Zealand, that's when the secret got out too, because all of the um, army boys and girls were camping in town so suddenly they're like okay they're going to film the Hobbit movie it was rumoured but not that no one knew in New Zealand where it would be because Peter Jackson the producer director was extraordinaire he is a local boy to New Zealand so they knew he'd be around but they didn't know where so anyway the army moved in created the bitumen road into the area then they moved in all the heavy equipment and started creating the set that matched the books that refer to the village that some of the main characters live in these hobbits and this area that they live in is middle earth so that's just a bit of background irrelevant news information but it sort of gives you a bit of a context. So pretty much they built 39 little hobbit holes. They then uh, made them out of polystyrene, boxes, you know, whatever they could to keep it cheap. It took uh, three months or so to build. Don't quote me on that, three, three or four months to build. They then got sign off on the second hobbit movie but the, produ um, the, the big wigs in Hollywood said we need it in three, like the first lot, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We want the Hobbit stretched over three. So they said, well, we better make the Hobbit village a little bit more sustainable. And they'd also, the farmer and his support crew noticed that everyone wanted to see it. It was an attraction potentially. So they did another deal where the village was created out of concrete and timber. The council signed off on it and they built some additional little houses to really suit the book of these hobbits, these little people. And um, another, uh, what did I say, 39. They made 44 in total. So some additional little houses were built. So as you walk around it, when you first pull in on the bus, you go to, you have a lunch on the tour and it's like the old marquee that the film uh, crew used. So it was like their mess hall. You then um, start your journey and there's an inn that's in the movie and a water mill house, you know, where the big wheel would spin, pulling water up to a mill. Those two structures have been turned into a, like a bed and breakfast stay um, and also a pub where you can have your meal and have a drink and it's all on the side of this big pond and the big tree, if you watch the movies, you'll know what I'm talking about, that caught the scouts' eyes as they were flying over New Zealand looking for a potential movie spot. And then you head off with your guide. We had Tiberius, this young lad from um, Canada. It was, uh, most of the guides were kids from overseas it was quite interesting I didn't hear too many New Zealand accents there was a lot of American accents and so whether there's a contract that they've picked up in America that's brought them out to New Zealand I don't know didn't get a chance to ask how the hangar Canadian turned up in Hobbitville in New Zealand as a tour guide but most of the either staff working in the gift shop and in their coffee shop they all had American accents. There were very few 
um, New Zealand accents that I heard anyway. And even the people bringing food out to the buffet, I could hear them chatting, they were American. So I thought that was interesting. So I'm, I'm guessing there's a contract somewhere that may be linked back to the States, but that's just me overthinking. So off we walked for uh, an hour around the set where we walked past all of the little villages and um, sort of just had a look at what they did in those sections. And there were bits and pieces that I sort of recognized myself from the movie. I've only watched the movie once, but then before we hopped on the cruise, there was an evening where there wasn't much on TV. So we decided to pay, play the first Hobbit movie. So that was good because I was like, ah, oh, there's Bilbo's green front door. That's, that's the pipe that he's smoking as he sits on the stool out the front of the little hut as um, the wizard comes along and invites him on an awesome adventure. And he's like saying, well, why would you want to go on an adventure there? A waste of time, basically. But he does. He leaves town and off on the adventure he goes. Now, the Hobbit movie, the three of them, actually were made after Lord of the Rings. But you really should watch The Hobbit first, the three of those, and then the Lord of the Rings movie. Because The Hobbit is the, a generation before the characters that you would know, like Frodo and Bill Bay, um, um, Sam, well, Ganji, I think his name is, I don't know. I'm gonna stop quoting detail like that because I really don't know. I'm just working a few little stitches in that crease of that squirrel, just to add a little bit of texture there. I'm just gonna go up to around his eye, I think, and drop a few little radiating stitches out, a couple in his ear. How are we going for time? So yeah, we had a, a lovely, lovely walk around and it was fantastic because we were on a working sheep farm too, which I haven't had a lot of exposure to. I was a dairy farmer's daughter and small crops. So sheep, I had friends that bought a sheep farm, but I was already an adult, had left home and we just went camping there once. So that's when I got to see their sheep farm. But this, that was like dry, arid Queensland northern New South Wales this was rolling green hills of New Zealand sheep farm so you imagine what it looked like it was stunning and as the bus was um, heading back to the main road part of the farm where the buses park and that's where the restaurant was and all that type of thing um, the sheep happened to be passing on a road in front of us and we were coming as a t-junction to them and there was a young girl on a quad bike and she had uh, four working dogs, which straight away I was like, oh my goodness, look at this, this is farming. A portion of the sheep broke away and there was hundreds of them. They were moving up the path, sort of heading away. We were heading this way, the sheep were heading that way. But the stragglers at the back broke away and came around the bus in front of us. She come flying back on the quad bike with all of her dogs on the back she sent out a couple whistles and this one dog jumped off and he come flying up around this bus that was in front of us because it was sort of a two of us driving slowly up the path towards the main area. This dog stopped on either side of the bus. So used the back of the bus to sort of, okay, let's demonstrate that that's the bus. The sheep are starting to split around the bus. She's parked here. This, this dog has come flying around the back of the bus woof 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 chomp chomp at the nose over to here did the same and then he laid down and the sheep were like okay we can't go any further he's blocking that laying down is the blocking the sheep then slowly turned he then shot around through the gully come up this side blocked them from going from the direction they came and then they carried on while about six other dogs sat on the back or four other dogs sat on the back of the quad bike just observing what this one dog did all the work. It was amazing. And of course, you know me, I'm on the bus going, watch this everyone, this is gonna be amazing. And they're all like half asleep and, you know, probably didn't care. And I'm like at the top of me voice going, check, watch the dog, watch the dog, it's about to happen. Cause I could see what was coming. 
and then everyone's standing and they're all watching and oh it was like it was brilliant it was just such a really nice addition to the cruise the the trip that day so that was a bonus to see to see the magic of a working dog working sheep yeah that's right up my alley anyway what do we do then back to the gift box a gift shop back into the bus and back to the boat which took nearly three hours because there was an accident on the way back so the boat had to wait it was seven o'clock at night people were whinging and complaining you know what people are like it's like we well, don't have to drive love just enjoy the holiday and have a nap but no I had a couple whinges sitting right behind me and oh boy they were so opinionated all the way there and I looked at my husband and I was like oh my goodness we've got some live ones behind us and then and they like I sort of felt like well why did you book the tour girls why are you here you're already complaining and oh that's not as good as bison I've tried bison and oh they're carrying on like pork chops anyway we get back on the bus and I'm like oh here we go they they were actually as high as kites they obviously thoroughly enjoyed it they'd never watched the videos they were purely there to get souvenirs for the kids the grandkids which is fair enough so that's why they all went is what I gathered listening into their grumbles so they get back on the bus and they're as high as kites they'd had a lovely time they um, had trotted around the whole park thoroughly enjoyed it they got to the gift shop they got a, a beanie for each of the kids that had the map of the hobbit um, village printed on it so they were they were stoked so yeah it was good to see that they did enjoy it in the end but oh boy did they grizzle all the way they did get a bit bit grizzly as we were informed that we were going to be running late due to the the net, an accident on the freeway so and I thought oh here we go but they dozed off to sleep so it wasn't too bad so it's a pretty peaceful ride back so I shouldn't be speaking like this I'm gossiping but it was pretty funny we were giggling as we were listening to their conversations the um got back to the boat what else has happened since that was that was our second last stop Bay of Islands was our last one but we had to hop in a tender. So one of the boats that they attach to the side of the ship, if we hit an iceberg, for example, we would be climbing into the tender to be rescued, wait for rescue. Well, they use them to ferry us out to any spots that they can't get the ship close enough to a wharf or a jetty. The, all of the other places were fine because we had nice deep ports. So it was pretty easy just to walk down the gangplank and we're off but this one was a tender and because there's so many people um, by the time we even could get a ticket to get on the tender it was after lunch so we were like ah, oh, bugger it so we ended up watching a movie or two and I stitched which was a great day if you ask me so we didn't end up seeing the bay of islands but it looked beautiful um what are we doing now oh, of course we're on our way back so our first day at sea as um, i just mentioned i just completed the cupcake course i have a choir practice at one o'clock what's the time now half past 12. so i will dodge off and do that and um yeah now it's just sit tight as we float chug our way back to Brisbane so that's my adventures so far it's been relatively relatively quick which is always the way with holidays took a few days to relax into it I must say I was a bit I don't know it's not enough to do antsy trotting around going well what do we do now what do we do now there's not enough to do so I have chilled out now, which is, I guess, the whole reason you go on holidays is just to relax. I do feel relaxed. Thank goodness I had needlework with, but it has helped. When we just want to watch a movie, we've got, um, 
yeah, something to keep me occupied. So I think I have finished my little my little squirrel as far as I want to take him. Question is, do I do a little bit extra stitching on his tail? Probably will. How are we going for time? 25 minutes. That's all good. Can't be late for choir. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that down. What I'll do at the end of this video, I will put some photos and maybe even a little video because I'm positive I took a few little videos over those two days at the Thermal Springs. So you'll see inside the museum and also some images of the movie set the, for the Hobbit movie. So I'm just going to stitch a little bit here and make sure it's going to work. So it's a very pale colour. Question is, is it too much of a transition you know sometimes you need that third thread just to get you to where you need to be but I think it'll be okay and if I let a bit of the background peek through which is the different color gray I think might work yeah this this will work I don't even know if you guys can see it I'm just doing short and long stitches just keeping it random not overthinking it because I want it to look like a bristly brushly little tail on my squirrel I saw a rabbit too I was looking out the window of the bus and it was into the late afternoon we were leaving the Hobbit film set so it was beautiful rolling hills. We just passed a deer farm and we were, I was just glancing along the paddocks, looking for anything that sort of I could see. And then right in the middle of the paddock, a power pole had cast a shadow across the, the grass and in the shadow was a rabbit. I was like, there's a critter, absolutely. What uh, actually one thing I wanted to tell you too is as we walked around all those Hobbit villages because it was built to look like a, a working village the flowers everywhere were amazing and you'll notice it in my photos they've got little picket fences they've got flower bushes everywhere I dead set I was walking through it going oh the inspiration here for down the garden path was just everywhere and there was even at one point I took a photo and I looked at it and I thought I could embroider that it would just come up beautifully just the way that the little fence and the window to the little house it just yeah was gorgeous I might um I might put down my needle thread for a second and bring up the photos because I just thought of a couple of things I wanted to show you that were in amongst it Let's get to, okay. So that's us walking. We've just got off the bus and there's this coach light greeting us as we're walking towards the, the opening area of the whole uh, set. So it's just beautiful. Now I do have it on live, so briefly the pictures will move slightly. As I flick, you'll see that I'm walking and the camera is making it look like an itty bitty movie. So that is one of the little entry points in the side of a hill. So they moved all this soil in to really help them build these facades to make it look like little um, villages. So that's us walking towards the um, big pub. The, that's our food hall where we had our meal and this is just a series of photos of the the inn see there's the clothing that was used by the hobbits in the actual movie so this is all doily stitched around the front of that bodice little bits of embroidery look at that fabric it was just oh it was so good and there was working fireplaces everywhere 
So they had smoke coming out of the little house chimneys because there's a series of chimneys. That's where we came back and got ourselves an apple cider or a pale ale or a ginger beer at the end. Uh, another working fireplace. It was just so beautiful. So the movie was in this inn and then uh, there was a to the side a working uh, blacksmith. So there's the the bellow and the apron all left over the fire that they use to heat everything. That's the bridge that Gandalf walks across and that's the wheelhouse. Photos probably aren't as good to see. There's the bridge again. So if you've watched the movie, you'll recognize that bridge. That's just a random little boat, a prop in the lake and that's the lake that caught their eyes. So it's not real big. That's the whole inn. I can't remember the name of it. Dragon's Inn or Dragon's Lair or it had a name. Then we set off on our journey around looking at all of the, um, so we pretty much walked around this little lake and all of the Hobbit villages. See there's little villages in the hill there's more at the top. That tree at the top is a fake tree that was in the movie. That's probably a better picture. There's one, two, three. They're all fake. There's only one that you can look in and walk in and it only goes a meter deep and you can sort of stand there and get a photo. But there's clotheslines everywhere. So um, chimneys randomly on the hills with smoke coming out of them, but there's a smoke machine in there that they make it look like they're doing things. I'm just going to flip through. So that's that's me coming up to some of the props. This was the farmer. He had chickens. Look at that. See all the flowers? That's what I mean by flowers. It was just layers and layers. And there's the door to the little inn. And look at the fences, the letter boxes, the chair, the bottles, like and each one's theme. So you pick a member of a village, windows, randomly in a, a, a mountain. Um, it's just the detail. So this guy, he was the chemist. He was mixing up medicines for everyone. Outside his hut, you could see barrels. Just inside the door was a jar. This one had a really cute gate too. There's a couple fences. They're redoing the grass over the ones in the center of this whole area we're walking around. We got the distinct impression actually that there's more movies coming. There was a little bit of work going on and we thought, oh, hello, they're expanding this either for the benefit of a movie or they're expanding. So I don't know if that's a hot tip, but I think there is word. Look at the gate. I started photographing gates. <laughs> So I was like, oh, look at all the flowers, look at the gardens, look at the layers. Then I started looking at all, every house had little different gates. So I started photographing gates. It's because of this journalist ditchery. It was ridiculous. That's how you step over a little fence. Up, 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 step over. Just the detail. It was, ah, a bumblebee, I tell ya. So you get the general picture of what it all looked like. Some of those photos are a bit ordinary. Another gate, another house. This was the beekeeper. That's right, this little house was where the beekeeper was. So there's all of his little beekeeping um, frames. That's where he spins them to get the honey out. And then he had honey for sale. And then up on the hill above his house, he had his bee boxes. There's some more washing in the distance. Um, vegetable patch oh the fisherman's house wasn't far that was an additional pond they created more washing of the hobbits living so you get the general gist that this is a meant to be a whole village where this was the baker they filmed they put thatch roofs chimneys fireplaces in the chimneys more washing it was just so sweet there's us being idiots in one of the houses the guy, the guide took like 20 photos of the same thing. He says, oh, I took plenty for you. Yeah, well, they're all the same picture. That's us standing right at the top of the hill, looking back now at the inn where we first started. So the bus was in behind those trees. We've walked around this lagoon or lake. 
we're right up high now as there's like layers upon layers of houses. So we're coming right up now to the famous house where Bilbo Baggins is sitting with his pipe and saying to the wizard that's come along saying, would you like an adventure? And he's like, what's the good of adventures? They're just a waste of time and make you late for supper. It's something like that, he says. And then he sort of thinks about it and goes, well, hang it, I'm gonna go. So there's a scene where he's running between some of the houses that we first saw on the trek where he says, I must fly, I'm off on an adventure. So a few of the young lads acted that out, but um, he goes to this gate and talks to the wizard. And then in another movie, the wizard and, and Bilbo sit up the top here next to the house and they're overlooking the village, watching the preparations for a big party. And it's right at the end of the movie, I believe. That sign, no admittance except on party business. That's what we bought at the gift shop. So we've got that sign that we're gonna put in the, the um, rumpus room. So it, oh, I'm just looking out the window and there's penguins. Are they penguins? Dolphins. They're dolphins. There's heaps of little dolphins jumping or are they just big fish? I don't know. There's something going on out there. You probably won't see it on the camera if I was to turn it. Yeah, I don't. They're dolphins. There's a pot of dolphins jumping beside the um, cruise ship, but they're probably about a kilometer away. So it's just like a splash of white and then I can see a fin going through the air. I don't think the camera would pick it up. There's heaps of them. So yeah, we made our way back. Oh, there was a pear tree with pears hanging on it. I've never seen a pear tree in real life. Planted for the movie, this was an apple tree. Like you just can't, oh, I tell you, it was beautiful. You could look in windows, that's the cheese maker. Um, you're probably sick of looking at the photos by now. I'll put a few at the end of the video, but you've got the general. There you go. The Green Dragon. That's what the name of the inn is. Thank goodness I took a picture of that. Okay. All right, guys. That's pretty much what I've got to show you, I think. Now it's just bob along and make our way back to Australia. So... Not sure if I will do another video. I'll probably finish my little squirrel. We don't have a prompt coming up. So I will be able to pick up my other two pieces and see if there's an opportunity to put some critters into those pieces. So yeah, back to normal, resume normal activities, I guess. What a shame. Back to normal. Holiday's nearly over. Oh well, we're gonna make the most of it, don't we? Cocktail update. I had to stop drinking pina coladas. I was only having one a night, but my tongue started to get really prickly. You know how when you drink a lot of pineapple or you eat pineapple that's probably not really ripe? Or you eat a lot of pineapple? Your tongue goes all prickly? Well, I didn't Google it. And yes, it is a condition. It's where there's a, um, a an enzyme in pineapple juice that breaks down the proteins on the top of your tongue and makes that tingly, itchy feeling. You can use pineapple juice or a piece of pineapple to tenderize <laughs> meat. So I figured I'd better lay off the pina coladas. So I gave it a two day break, tried another one still tingly so I then stayed away from them for three days and I had one last night and it was fine but as I'm talking to you now I can sort of feel like my tongue is a little tender so my guess is tonight my condition will be back so no pina colada what a shame but anyway I'm sure I'll survive I know I'll save some money there we go, I've run out of thread. I might leave it at that, guys. The video is probably a little bit shorter than I would normally do, but I do need to make my way now to choir practice. You know how it is, I have commitments. So I'll just show you, I don't know if you can see all that. 
the pale thread sitting on the darker thread, maybe, probably not under that light. All right, guys, I shall finish my squirrel later, but I better leave you and head off to choir practice, get my do re mi all sorted. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. It may be on the boat, but it might be back in the craft room. We'll see how we go. Bye for now.